There we go. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Denise, and I'm going to be filling in for Charmaine while we're doing discipleship through Philippians. And um, I'd like to say hello to everybody on Facebook, and thank you for tuning in. First, we're going to start off with a prayer, and then we'll get going. I'll be able to share the screen and let everybody see what we're reading. Father God in heaven, we come to you in your beautiful son, Jesus' name. We just praise and worship your holy name, and thank you so much for this opportunity. We ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but we know that you've got us covered, Lord, and we thank you for giving us your grace and mercy and everything good that's in this world. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to start by reading Philippians 2 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And, you know, it's important that we know that that doesn't translate to everybody right away, but it really means in the amplified version says, do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. And then I'll, I'll continue to read this uh, living commentary notes first before I read the life for, um, before I read the life for today's study Bible notes. Let me see how we get on here. Zach, hi. Good evening, Kai. Yes, good evening. Yeah. Okay. Is good it evening. morning for you? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Okay. Good morning for you. Yeah, we okay. <laughs> We're live on Facebook. I'm filling in for Charmaine. And I just read the uh, verse look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And that's Philippians 2 4. And I'm going to start with the living commentary first, okay? The living commentary says, this isn't telling us to be busybodies or nosy. It's just saying we should look at things from the other person's perspective too. Mm -hmm. And I know that's extremely important for everyone, especially nowadays. You know, does anybody have any input on that? You know, what do you want to say anything about? Because I know this is, I think this lesson, I'm so flattered to be doing this one because I, when I read this, I knew right off the bat um, how it pertains to myself in particular. Because if you look at things from other people's perspective and, and realize what everybody's been going through, you have more compassion in your heart and you think of things differently. Yep. Yeah. What is the scripture passage that we're studying uh starting with philippians 2 4 okay hi april good evening we're starting off at philippians 2 4 we said our i said our prayers and hellos and then we're on facebook live so if you um if you guys are shy, just go ahead and hide yourselves there. If you want to stay on, that's great. And I'll read Philippians 2, verse 4 again. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. All right. You guys haven't done this one yet, have you? I want to make sure because I went back and looked through the uh, I I, I know. I'm pretty sure you left off at two, three. So I'm just making sure I'm double checking with everyone. So what would that mean? We looked at the amplified version of this and it says, do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. I think the, uh, actually the, that's the, you know, the opposite is the problem uh, of, of the world actually. We tend to, look at ourselves too much and then we we are uh, because of that we cannot really live with one another um 
and it caused a lot of strife unnecessarily. So, uh, and because the, I mean, I'm talking about general, you know, general, uh, not, not specific, just, just general, you know, the scene in the world. Uh, because of that, <clears throat> the world has, actually the world has a lot of uh, good things going on. Yeah. But because uh, human beings tend to look at ourselves and, and be become very narrow, you know, in our perspective, we, we can't really make use of all the good things that the Lord has uh, given us, actually. Thank so that's, you. I've always, yeah. I've, I've been thinking that myself. It's like, I, I see and hear people in a panic and God bless them. And it's so sad to think that people living like that, not knowing that there's a beautiful world out there, that there's happy people to get along with and um, so many things that we can learn. And instead of focusing on, you know, our problems, I, I see people where I live, especially, and it breaks my heart. There's people out of jobs and have lost their homes and they're on the side of the street. Um, you know, I don't know if they have signs, they're asking for food and that breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. If I can help them, I try to, but I, I also think, um, you know, what would I do if I was in that situation? I don't know. And I know there's jobs available, but I think people are just afraid to work nowadays. But, you know, you have to, we have to try to look out for other people and try to help and worry about the welfare of everyone else and not, not focus on our own problems. Yeah. Yeah. From <laughs> another person's perspective, I think that's the key. You know the living commentary. Uh, yeah. we, we look at things about uh, fr from the other person's perspective too. That means we we widen our perspective, and no matter what camps they are in, but we just widen our perspective. If everybody does that, you see, it's, it will be a much much uh, better better place to live because we yeah. we don't have many years on earth. You see, so each person has a limited number of years and if we still quarrel and squabble and you know uh put a lot of fake uh fake uh, words out there um because we uh, uh, i mean the the reason why people put a lot of fake uh news or words or hate hate words out there it's because they, they have their own secret agenda, you see. They are just looking for themselves, you know, their own person, personal, not even a group, yeah. personal yeah. interest. They get, uh, you know, personal reward out of it. Uh, so it's, it's very sad because they're not looking at the whole, I mean, the whole uh, nation's uh, perspective, for example, you know. There should be a perspective, a common ground, a good common good. That's how God cre created uh, people to live together. Otherwise, the otherwise the earth would have self-destruct long ago. So Paul had it right. He was saying, "Don't just worry about yourself. We're made by God to to yeah. fellowship, that's, edify, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. fellowship, and and uh, learn to look at other people's perspective, mm -hmm. how they look at things. Why do they look at things that way?" Yeah. And how the Lord uh, can uh, empower us to help them. I mean, if they really need to change, you know, oh, yeah. their, their view. How can we reach out to them and help them to see the positive side of things mm -hmm. and, uh, and look at how the goodness of God in the, in, you know, in, in the direction that God wants us to go. Well, I think it starts off with one-on-one -on -one. because if you can it's infectious if you can go out and spread love and joy to just one person and make their day and then they go on and do it and it spreads out like that because the same thing with the with the sadness or the evil or the hate um if somebody comes at you one day and if you're not if you don't know like we know it could get people down and then they spread that to someone else and spread it. So that's why it's so important that we know this and Paul was right on the money, you know, and this is, this is apparently 
some this I think it was two two the whole chapter two I think was a, a big poem so to speak yeah. um and it was giving us not only instruction but also his way of this is now after the way Jesus Jesus showed us to live like this yeah. Actually, he says something which is a key to to being uh, able to live with one another. Uh, chapter two, verse one. You see, he said, "Fellowship of the spirit," and then affection and mercy, and then of course, because of the consolation of Christ on us, each of us. You see, Aww. so verse one is really the answer. And uh, it's a fellowship of the spirit. And the spirit there is the Holy Spirit. That's right. And affection and mercy. So we, are, we lack that, you know? I mean, the world, the world now is going to a direction like we have no affection, no mercy on others if they are not of our views. So uh, the, the viewpoint uh, Actually, said to say, if you look at the big perspective as Paul look at now, people will just pass away. I mean, nobody know what's going to happen to an individual tomorrow. You see, so we don't want to have our lives full of regrets. You know, no, thank the you. words that we have spoken, which is unkind, mm -hmm. we cannot take it back. It's gone out. Yeah. Uh, you see that there's a saying, the Chinese saying that you pour you pour water on the ground. Can you take it back? No, that oh, water that's just good. yeah. It's it, you can't take up the water that's poured on the ground. That's how you speak your word. You see, once your word go out, it's just like you pour a, a, a bucket of water on the ground. How to how are you going to get it back? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'm going to remember that. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. It puts it in perspective. That really is good. Yeah. Um, does anybody, would anybody like to read the Life for Today Bible study notes? I could read it. Okay, thanks, April. The way we implement the instruction of the previous verse is to esteem others better than ourselves, is to look at their side of things instead of seeing everything through our selfish eyes. If we think only about ourselves, we will be selfish. If we get out of self and think more about the benefit of others than the benefit of self, then we will be selfless. It is a matter of focus. Whichever side of things we focus on is the side we will take. Therefore, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Yes. And I know that now this one, the question one, I don't, we already know that one because that's not, that's kind of silly, but I want to go back and discuss if we could, please. I think that the way Andrew wrote this, it, you really can, you can say many things about it, but it speaks on its own because mm -hmm. right here, if we get out of self and think more about the benefit of others than the benefit of self, then we will be selfless. And it is a matter of focus. It is. Yeah. Any thoughts? It um I had something a second ago. Oh, whenever we focus on other people, yeah. When we put other people first. Um, we tend to push our problems, our concerns aside. They're not as big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, and, I think that's the point yeah. here. Yeah. You, Whenever you Paul, right. Yeah. Exactly. That is good. Whenever Paul was going through all this, he could have took it a whole different, a whole different route. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't even imagine. Now it just came up in me that, um, of course, with the Holy Spirit helping him, but yes. also with him focusing on others and the benefit of others. Yeah. It would really help him to triumph. 
Yeah, yeah you could tell he was doing this. I was, I was thinking about how it goes on to talk about Christ after that and how he took on the form of a bond servant coming in the likeness of men. He yeah. became obedient. And I was thinking about how, you know, it talks about being not being self-centered anymore, but being a servant and a servant is what minister means. So to be a minister and to be able to minister to other people, we have to be like that, which is basically entering into Christ, who is the ultimate servant leader. Now before, minister. oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Lisa. No, that was it. And minister. I'm just wondering if before anyone ever um, knew any of this, if in, hi, Carol. Filling in for Charmaine. Thanks for coming. Hi. Hi there. Are you, are you the only one? No, no, we're all here. So there's uh, oh. April, Lisa, Kai. Okay. And we're live on Perfect. Facebook. So. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> no, I was saying that if before when before we were saved i wonder if anyone ever thought that you know had the question in their head why is he washing their feet or why is he certain things he did that you couldn't understand until after you knew all these things i still don't know why <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you say that because that is one of my questions as to why he was washing their feet and well i know it's to clean their feet and i don't know there's a few other things i'm sure but yeah well he i think that it was more so the point of humbling yourself and serving others you know yeah. and this is what paul's trying to focus on um we're we started on uh, philippians 2 4 and we're already in the discussion, discussion question number two. And this okay. one is a good one. So I'll, I'll scroll up on this one. I'm sure. just going to join you a different way because I can't see everybody and stuff. So okay. I'll be right there. Yeah. Okay. okay, bye. Thanks. Okay. When you make it a habit to look at things from the other side, Mm -hmm. uh, instead of looking everything through your own uh, eyes, your own selfish eyes, I mean, in my mm -hmm. case, it's like, I realized that uh, it's actually much better because uh, it become, of course, the secular word will be empathy. You know, you have yeah. an empathy for people. Yeah, I was and thinking. You, you, uh, you don't really, you know, I mean, you've got to realize that there's a world out there, you know, and you're not a kid anymore. You know, like two year old, we, we, we just snatch everything for ourselves and we think that our mother <laughs> is our, our belonging, you know, like kind of thing. So, right. but the thing is that uh, it's not like that. We are grown up. So even Christians, I think we, we realize that uh, actually Paul told us there's a, this is a mindset. So he, he, in the next verse, I think he talked about it. You know, yeah. let this mind yeah. be in you, right. which was also in Christ. Yep. So that's the mind of Christ that every Christian must have. Especially right now, I believe, I mean, it's like, you know, like the world is uh, being polarized into two, two camps. Right. And there are Christians in both camps. So mm. it's very important for Christians to really look and say, hey, you know, uh, uh, what do I really stand for? What legacy I want to leave behind? Like, right. uh, like last night, I mean, for me it's night, okay? For you it's day, okay? Last night, <laughs> I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep. Simple. You know, like, yeah, for a few nights I couldn't sleep because I was thinking like, hey, even if I live like Abraham to uh, 100 plus, which is very, very common in yeah. my family. Mm. Uh, but still, you know what I want to do with the rest of my years now, you know, like, another 30 year, 40 year, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I realized the Lord comforted me and said, hey, 
Abraham actually had one goal, one mission for him. God gave him one mission. That is, <clears throat> he will have descendant, you know. Because God, he will have to raise up godly descendants. He will have descendants, okay? Like mm -hmm. the stars, like the sands. And when did he make, when did he meet this uh, mission for the Lord? Only a hundred, at a hundred, when he had Isaac. Yeah, right. Yeah. He only make it at 100 years old. And that's all, that's it. He didn't do any other thing. You know, Abraham, his mission is yeah. to just produce one Isaac. I get what you're saying. 100 years. Yep. Mm -hmm. The Lord, the Lord called him at 75, I think, or 65 or 75. So he, he only make it at 100. So and it's not to worry. After, after he produced Isaac, God knew his heart. He proved his heart for God. His mission was finished. Nice so, uh, of course, we are, I'm not asking a hundred year old a woman or guy <laughs> who's an Isaac now, but looking at it spiritually, you know, the <laughs> children that we produce as sure. uh, yeah, in the in the, in the Lord, you know, we keep producing yeah. uh, spiritual children. Whoever, what are the fruits of out, our labor? Yeah, what yeah, that's right. Whoever we reach out to, if the person's mm -hmm. life is transformed, we plant the seed, we sow the seed. We are actually producing children. Praise so God. if that is our mission, just do it. You know, mm -hmm. keep on doing, keep on yeah. doing it until the point where we meet the Lord. Thank you. And we would have yeah. left a very good legacy behind. That's very good, Kai. Yeah, that is very good. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And then we basically answered number two, you know, but let's think of number three here. What changes, and we somewhat answered that too, but what changes do you think would be made if believers got out of self and thought more about the benefit of others? And oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I think the church would be expanding and multiplying and growing as it did in the beginning. Oh, sure. It, it is in some places, but I think I need to work on it. My, well, my side of it, you know. We're in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes a lot of the pressure off because we're, we, it just keep going in that direction. And, you know, Charmaine okay. always says, stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, I, I have something to say about that. Yeah. This past week, we've been on quarantine at school because we're not allowed to go because somebody got sick. I'm not sure what, oh boy, boy. how sick they are or anything like that. But anyways, I'm here by myself and I'm in my own trailer and kind of staying away from everybody just in case, you know. Oh my God. Yeah. So you start getting to the point where you feel like, oh, why am I even here? <laughs> like that right <laughs> and and, then, and I was like god please just just I know I'm here for a reason and you've given you've already prepared me for all the stuff that you want me to do and and yet I I just couldn't get my mind and my thoughts off myself and then I I watched <laughs> self-centeredness <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for some reason I put it on on the tv because I watch a lot of uh stuff from Drew and whatever and while I was watching it the Lord reminded me of why I'm really here <laughs> we're really here because we're here to spread the gospel and there's no greater joy than telling somebody and freeing their lives with the yeah. gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ because he's the one that set us free he's like in Luke 4 18 it says that he came he came to set the captives free and that's what I believe that we're all here for and ah oh, I got so inspired by that thought that I haven't felt that way since you've had a revelation and now you have another testimony <laughs> I have many <laughs> I have a many that's what that's a testimony though because it's right. something you had a revelation of yeah. why you're actually but here it, but what happened in uh, some girl from Sudbury, where I live in Canada, she's a Jehovah's Witness, and she was a tenant of mine for a long time. She contacted me just in the last little while, and she's been asking me about the Lord and, oh, and the Bible God. and stuff like that. And I've been talking to her and texting her, 
send in her Andrew's videos and she's like super, super excited. Thank like you. people get when they watch Andrew for the first time yeah. and they like it enough while well, she can't get enough. She's like, I need to know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing to watch when you see it, not just feel it and sense it for yourself, but to actually watch somebody get excited about the truth of God's word. Yeah. And it's, it, you have to remind people too, because I, my uncle had worked on me for about three years and I say worked on me. He was very subtly sending me material from Andrew mm -hmm. and I really never thought I had time. I, I always watched maybe three minutes and said, okay, whatever. And something inside of me just clicked all of a sudden. Yeah. And when I watched more than three minutes, I said to myself, wow, there's nobody else that's made any sense like this guy. And does it so clearly and without being ashamed of any part of like, he'll say, this is a radical statement. And then you know what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It's just like, it's just like the way cartoon, that whole setup. Yeah so simple and so easy to relate to that it's it's almost too simple for people to to miss it <laughs> oh yeah yeah and, and i love it i love the simplicity of the whole thing that's what people need though i think that yes. they're afraid to be looked upon in the carnal world as like um i know people would say oh a lot of people don't want to be a jesus freak or don't want yeah. to be crazy and that's not the way anyone I've ever come in contact with behaves at all. There's, no. there's no one that's too much or too little. There's no re religiosity. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Andrews. Yeah. Actually, actually just, uh, just a sharing. Um, uh, even though we are on Facebook, but I can talk about it. I, I, I think if you uh, you see, in, in, another, in another language, I, I think you know what I mean. Uh, one particular language where I come from, uh, I'm talking about a big one, not a small one, right? I come from two small languages, I mean two languages. One is my own small country, but one is a really, very really big, my ancestors' yep. place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That one, a yep. lot of people, their lives are transformed by Andrew's teaching. We put mm -hmm. it in, in their language and somehow they, they are really, more and more of them could bypass the barrier you know what I'm talking about, barrier, okay? Oh, yeah. They, mm -hmm. they got through. They, 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 like, they are like so hungry. Mm -hmm. And they want more. So uh, it's like we are, we are having an explosion, you know, somewhere else. Not in U.S., I suppose. Not yet. <laughs> but, but another part of the world. So you just think of the impact of the teaching. It's very simple. It's very clear and his disciple uh, making just as what jesus said and yeah. it's exploding now yeah mm -hmm. people are i mean people of another culture another language very secular and being persecuted for being christians and right. yet and yet they go for it they go for it because the, it. The, word, yeah. the word of god just cannot be stopped and it's a power amen you know, think of it this way because I think the reason we're taught this way and our minds see it easier this way and we're supposed to have the faith of a child so honestly I think it kind of coincides everything's a little bit parallel when you when you come to realize that this stuff is laid out simply and in the bible if you notice things are repeated over and over over and over I mean not just not just verses but words and uh, simple statements and God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, God's compassion. Jesus was compassionate. And you hear that word compassion in the Bible so often. Um, and that's for us. So that when we do read this book and say, hey, wait a minute, didn't I just read that? And you're like, no, that was back in, that was in another, actually another book, actually, you know. So if you think about all the ways that we're being taught not only from Andrew, but from the Bible and everything and that repetitiveness. And it's when it soaks in and when we finally get it, that revelation knowledge, 
Don't y'all just get so excited? I, I get so excited. I'm like, yeah, I finally mm -hmm. figured this out. <laughs> can I can I share something real quick? Please. Sure. So when we came to Bible college, my husband half drugged me here. <laughs> he, had, he had a dream and it was basically um, someone that was in God's army taking him and showing him all of these pillars and benches and things that had writing about God on them and oh, and he was looking at one of them that said God is God not not Allah not Buddha but God is God and then the guy looked at him and he said now who are you going to serve God or yourself mm. and he woke up and we we had been consider, considering coming here and had actually come been supporting the ministry for since they broke ground in Woodland Park. And we um, finally came and visited for the family conference. And we signed up at the very last second, just before we got in our camper and drove away. Oh we my gosh. For, we signed up for winter quarter. That was, was great. Trying to get out of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> trying to get out I, of I, it. I, yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a trailer. Yeah, You're there in it right in now. It. I'm in it right in now. Yeah. Just before Thanksgiving, and we came here, and I mean, it was this one probably the scariest thing I've ever done. We didn't have nothing, and God oh, just wow. did miracles after miracle after miracle of provision for us. I mean, money came in from all over the place, and Amen. so we'll yeah. always have that no matter what happens in this life to look back on of how God has gotten me, him through two years of school here and me three when we couldn't afford it ourselves, you Amen. know, and the yeah. scripture that the, so the scripture that the Lord gave me when I asked him, Lord, why did you bring me here? Why did you make me come here? <laughs> he gave me this one, which was second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And this is the last part that jumped out at me, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Okay. Can I make That's a comment here. of that? <laughs> I, somebody was saying to me the other day where I was listening to something about correction and he was saying that it's not like correcting a person, but it was saying correcting the teaching that you've been receiving that is wrong. Oh. And that's action that God is talking about in that verse. And I thought, wow, that's a good one. That's really <laughs> that's good. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. teaching as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's the correct and, teaching uh, of the word of God. Right. It's not and easy to, to correct and, teaching, actually. It's not easy at all. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, uh, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, things like, uh, especially those with uh, knowledge, uh, theology and so on. Yeah. And, then, and those who follow the, those with the theology background, by idolizing somebody who can... Uh, teach the Bible word by word, verse by verse, you know, very good teacher for, according to them is good, you see, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, maybe five decades, you know, uh, uh, they have become idols. Uh, I'm talking about, again, my own, uh, my own uh, background. Be mm -hmm. uh, they become idols, you see. Mm -hmm. And then I, I realized that after I, switch, not switch, after the Lord brought me to the gospel of grace, and then are, uh, and of course, later on, you know, Andrew, and, and of course, I began with Pastor Joseph Prim, and then after the Andrew, and then many, many others, as I was looking at healing, so I, I read up all the word of faith, all the word of, all the word, all the faith, all the, you know, all those people, mm -hmm. healers, and so on, so mm -hmm. uh, the whole spirit-filled world, Whereas the other world, uh, a big chunk of it, I'm talking about Christian world, they, mm -hmm. they are still uh, blinded by theology, you know, 
Yeah. I wouldn't mention what theology. I think you know when I say theology, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> they really study it word by word and so on. So they worship people who can teach that. Uh, I, I have been so like lately, you know, I want to counter that one through my writing because I, I've been writing. Mm -hmm. So I want to counter that. Then I started searching for that, that person, that name, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and it's, it's like, I was so full of anger, you know, but then I realized, then the Lord corrected me. He said, don't, don't bother with that person and his group anymore. He's all over the world. And he's, he's, he, 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 when he go to our country, it's like the whole country is mesmerized, okay? I, he said, don't. You just focus on the positive teaching first. You just go ahead and saw your seat. Then I realized that, yeah. Because people now, I mean, there are two camp now. Right? It's not political camp, it's religious camp. We've got one camp on one side, still dragging people to a wrong path. Uh, to them, it's like suffering is good, you know, that's the chastisement of God. You, 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 you bear your suffering, whatever it is, okay? It's a, if it's a will of God, God will heal you. And, that right. kind of thing, okay? That kind of teaching. It's not wrong, you know? It's like, but the thing to them is not wrong, okay? But, but the thing is that people are really suffering, you know? So I, I uh, then the Lord said, no, no, you just sow the positive seed. You, you just go ahead and keep sowing the positive one. Yeah, your focus. I think that's the key. Yeah. I think that, that's what Andrew did. And that's what the rest of the faith teacher did, you know? They just sow the positive seed. Kenneth Hagen, um, even as, as old as Charles Finney and, uh, and the latest one, and, or, or John Gillette or whoever, you know, the healer, the, the, those who walk in faith and even Kenneth Copeland, sow the positive seed. Forget about uh, uh, looking at your enemy and not enemy, I mean, looking at the, the, the wrong teaching and then start because Carol said correcting the teaching, right? Uh, yeah. We correct the teaching when the Lord brings them to us. But when we when we saw the seed, we teach the right teaching. I think I will look at it that way. You're not no, I, what, what I was trying to say was what he was saying was correct teaching is that we're getting correct teaching by coming here at Andrew's school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Teaching. That's right. Not yeah. That that's we're right. gonna correct people and their teaching. Is that yeah. we're gonna get the correct teaching from yeah. the Get them to get the correct teaching. Yeah, that's yes. right. That's what we do. So what are we working on? Which, which, uh, oh, Philippians 2. We went through Philippians 2, 4 already, and we're just going to start Philippians 2, 5. Okay. And um, would anybody like to read the verse? Is it King James? <laughs> yeah, well, I have it up here on the screen if you want. If you'd like. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, let this be in you which was in christ jesus amen let this mind, mind yeah in which is in christ jesus. <laughs> let this mind be in you which is also in christ jesus and yes i have the amplified here too uh, which they use the word attitude have this attitude in yourselves which was also in christ jesus and i you know I, I kind of like the mind better because that makes it more our, a lot of people don't take responsibility for their attitude, but um, I think both are applicable. I'm trying to get down to, all right, here we go. And I'll go ahead and read the commentary. Jesus is the supreme example of looking at things from other person's point of view. Jesus took the form of flesh so that he could know exactly how we feel. He gave up everything so he could identify with us. What an example. That is so true. Okay, would anybody like to read this, this portion over here? I can read it. Thank you. The understood subject of this sentence is the word you. 
Paul was saying, you let this mind be in you. Through the new birth, the Lord has given us the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16, but it is still our choice to let this mind function in us. The phrase, let this mind, King James Version, or have this attitude, New American Standard Version, is a present imperative. That means it carries the idea of a commitment or a way of doing something as a lifestyle or a general habit. It primarily denotes a state of mind and an inward attitude rather than an act of thinking. Paul was speaking here about a heart attitude expressed as a lifestyle. We are seeing an insight into the mind of the Lord Jesus himself described in Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, and he certainly would have been justified in being arrogant. Yet he was just the opposite. Paul was drawing on the attitude that Jesus displayed toward us in order to encourage us to treat others with the same selfless love. The New International Version says your attitude should be the same as that of Christ yeah. Jesus. That's funny. I mean, I don't, I don't, not funny, haha, but it's like, we really, that, I'm hearing that more and more and I'm soaking it up. Because, you know, the, it's so hard to think that we're, we're actually trying to compare ourselves to be like Jesus Christ. But mm -hmm. in reality, we're supposed to actually try to compare ourselves to be like Jesus Christ. And it's, yeah. When you hear it you and you think about it, um, what a blessing, what an honor. You know, I think that, I don't think that people understand where he had to come down here to be an intercessor for us, but it was also to be an example for us. And mm -hmm. Paul, when he was writing this, I, I think he, he took, I think it was all just a hundred percent Holy spirit coming through him. Um, but part of his knowledge and the way he worded things, it's, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm also going to read second Corinthians two sixteen that, uh, says for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ so in question one here the discipleship question says what makes Jesus the supreme example of looking at things from the other person's point of view he gave up his deity to come live like us yeah that's he mm -hmm. died he died as a sinner with no sin that's yeah and just the, the pain and just coming down here and humbling himself and did mm -hmm. everything with compassion mm -hmm. and very better thing i like to remember is um before jesus started his ministry he didn't have the holy spirit and yeah he, that's right and all of his works that he did was through the Holy Spirit. It wasn't because he was the son of God. He left all that behind. Everything he did in the flesh was through the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. All right. Barry Bennett was on um, the minister's conference today, and he was saying that... Um, through all this, the, the cancer that he had and stuff like that. Mm. And that he uh, figures that when Jesus went out to pray, he got all his instructions from <clears throat> the Father in order to be able to minister the next day, probably. And that's yeah. probably how he got his. In John 5 19, he says that I only do what I see my Father do Father, and yeah. stuff like that. And he was saying, like he was still a man he was still mm -hmm. doing it the way we would have to do it maybe he had a fuller spirit but he also he worked at it more than what we would work at it anyways any anyway, what no, barry that's... said was that he yeah. was saying that he got himself filled up by being in prayer and mm -hmm. being 
in 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 the will of the Father and getting to have uh, conversations with Him and having fellowship with Him. If we're not doing that every day on a daily basis, mm -hmm. we're going to be walking in the flesh, not in the Spirit. Yeah, that right. is renewing our mind, right? Right. Exactly. Oh, I was thinking about a teaching we did recently that Charmaine did about um, having two minds. Yeah. And that we have a carnal mind, our natural mind, which is not directly connected to God. And we have the mind of Christ, which is inside of our spirits, you know, our spiritual mind. And we can draw mm -hmm. from either one of them at will. And so walking in the spirit is learning to not be double minded, but to be stably mm -hmm established in the mind of and in the thoughts and attitude of jesus christ yeah and somehow when he was on the earth he he actually emptied himself of himself just like we have to do by our own mm -hmm. free will displace our own selfish ambitions and the motivations that would be for our own interests and put others and god's spirit ahead in front mm -hmm. lead, and that somehow we can learn through habit daily fellowship with the lord and then letting him yielding to him how to do this on a daily basis so that we no longer respond to other people's sinful actions behaviors and words with flesh naturally but we answer through the spirit that's good yeah then I think the more and more that we renew our mind with the word, the right. easier it's gonna, it's just gonna, I think she was saying that to, um, what, you know, and I've heard this before and it's more about like, what kind of jelly do you have inside of you? If somebody squeezes you, is, is it gonna come out natural kernel things that are not of the spirit or is, is it gonna just emanate Jesus, you know? Right. So, we have to keep that jelly Jesus filled. <laughs> you know, we have to have the Jesus jelly in us all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's, that's you know, and like I said, where that re repetition comes in, we're hearing yeah. this stuff over and over, and now we're saying it, and then we're going to say it again, and we're going to say it again, and then we're reading it every day, and then, oh yeah, and I go back and learn stuff that I learned six months ago that I might have almost forgot about, had I not gone over it again. Yeah. So keep that in mind when, because I, I know there was a lesson that we did this morning that I had actually gone over with Charmaine about five, six months ago. And it was as if I was hearing it for the first time. And I looked yeah. at my notes, they were great. <laughs> my notes were excellent, but it was like, oh my gosh, I, I just, you know, it, it kind of like it went in and went back out the other ear and after mm -hmm. time you don't forget about it but you you don't it's just like you need to hear it over and over again because it, it's not going to escape you completely it's not going to escape your spirit mm -hmm. but your mind needs to be renewed right every day mm -hmm. and we have to walk the talk i yeah. think we have to walk it out a few times in real time and and then it becomes a part of our daily walk with the lord and in this world to be not of it you know that's where the this the renewing of the mind practice and read and so you could you can spew bible all the time <laughs> right. just be 100 percent biblical i didn't i didn't tell you but i felt the same thing when i heard that i'm like wow that's such <laughs> a great revelation but how do you hang on to it <laughs> you know how many times can you hear something and sometimes if a matter of months or weeks go by and then all of a sudden you hear it again you're like oh my gosh you know this is yeah. almost like the first time again and suddenly it's like all these scripture verses go off like light bulbs in my head yeah scriptures yeah. that are referring to you know us being in christ and what we have access to through him and that he's only a few inches away from our our soul and our body, mm -hmm. all the things that we could have are there, but we have those to are, have them by faith. 
Yes, like have spiritual talk. synapses going um, off in your head, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. Oh well, yeah. That explains that. That's what that's about. You know, it's not about in the great by and by. It's about right here, right now, the kingdom of God. Yeah. Here. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. All right. Philippians two verse six says, "Who being in the form of God." thought not at robbery to be equal with God. And I'm going to um, go ahead and read the Amplified version of that because, and it's not that we don't understand it, but I always like him and, and it, I don't even think it's a different perspective. It says, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. So it, it's, We'll read on. I, I know that it'll explain more. Um, does anybody want to read the living commentary first? Anyone? Okay, I'll read it. I really dislike the New International Version translation of the verse, who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. It makes this very clear passage unclear. This verse is simply saying that Jesus didn't think equality with God was wrong to claim for himself. It was absolutely true. He was God and was, he was God and was therefore totally equal to God, but he laid all of his divinity and his glory aside and took upon himself the form of a man. Mm -hmm. That's Yeah. I mean, if you read that and you think, and, and it doesn't soak in the, if you mm -hmm. can't digest what was just said, like if that God came down himself in the form of a man and then yeah. look at what he went through for us. It, it kind of reminds me of when I was listening to Mike and Carrie Pickett doing one of the uh, first classes of Harris and, and Mike Pickett said, it's like when Jesus lives inside of us, mm -hmm side of us is like about a, a whole bunch of jesus's going all over the place <laughs> almost like he said the same thing but he was saying god lives in me we're equal mm -hmm. same people so it's almost the same thing to that me is, no i know exactly now hearing you say it like that that puts another perspective mm -hmm. you but i just remember i the reason i remember that is because as soon as he said that I got a vision of Jesus standing there breaking the bread and 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 giving thanks to God about that and then feeding the multitude and the whole thing mm -hmm. that I got out of it is that he was going to indwell all of us and that mm -hmm. was what he was showing the people when he was feeding them. Wow. Yeah. And you know what that the was other just the yeah, other that was one of those and, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. The other connection I see is that he needed a vessel that was willing to sacrifice what they had in order that he could lift it to the father and bless it, break it, and then multiply it to feed the multitudes. Mm -hmm. And that's a principle with our lives is that every one of us, when we are broken and then God blesses us and, <laughs> and he multiplies us and he sends us out into the earth. I mean, think about the, disciples after they were persecuted they wouldn't go until trouble came and then when trouble came they scattered but everywhere they went they preached the gospel they shared the message and the church grew and multiplied and became strong so mm -hmm. i think that's a part of that principle too yeah is that he needs us he needs the vessel that will sacrifice to him what they have so that he can bless it i mean before him, we, we aren't very much, but when he touches our lives, that's when we can become a blessing. And that's really what it's about, I think. Yeah, you're, you're saying after he ascended, how the disciples um, went out and made more disciples. And right, yeah, yeah, I was doing it. Isaac <laughs> was a type of Jesus, and then Jesus is a type for us. And that's why you see Paul said we, we ought to give our body as a living sacrifice. You know, right. it's all about sacrifice. 
Uh, mm. Isaac was sacrificed by Abraham, but of course he, you know, in the end he didn't. But the act of it and the mm -hmm. attitude of giving him up, and then the then he became a type for Jesus. Jesus, of course, used he sacrificed his whole body. You know, he, he yeah. died, right. and and he expect us to give our body as a living sacrifice. That is in Roman twelve. Right, 12, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. So yep. the, the or, sacrifice actually is continue. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, unless we we are when well, you mentioned like broken into pieces and so on, unless we were uh, broken in the sense that the, the the you see it's just like a seed, you know, you plant it. That's right. Uh, the shell and the nuts or whatever, the cover must the, the husk must be broken. Yes. Yeah, Otherwise, right, the, the right. real essence of the life cannot come out. That's know? right. Yeah, that's, what, that's what happened to us. Yeah. That the whole life, uh, the yeah, shell, right. every yeah. external thing, fall, mm -hmm. fall away, and the spirit, the spirit man must rise. Right. And yeah. the, the funny, the unusual thing is the spirit man actually is joined to us. It's, it's in us, you know, it's joined yeah. to the Lord. And it's but joined to us. Oh, yeah. And all of us together, we have. I don't want to scare anybody on Facebook because I know they're probably thinking, what's going on? Okay. Why do I have to sacrifice my body for, but it, uh, what happens is, and I want to make this very clear to people, no, 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 it's no. not giving us something that we can't handle. Because not physical, more, not physical. Yeah. 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 It's about giving up your mental um, anxieties, giving up your, your mental status quo, giving up your 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 peace of mind comes from knowing that we're serving others and right the only way you know that is once you start doing that and i think that, it, sorry go ahead carol no i think one way to describe that is to say instead of having selfish ambitions where our, mm -hmm. our goal and our focus is on what he would like us to do in yeah. our lives instead of that's the sacrifice because we could turn around and live for ourselves but we don't want to live for ourselves. We want to live for him. <laughs> That's, That's true. Yeah. That's, in a way, we, we, live off, we live for the good of others. You know? Because I we am. God. You see, the Bible say, uh, uh, Jesus said two things. One is we love God. Another one is we love others. You know, we love our neighbor. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah. we, we are supposed to do all that. And that's the, the whole, the summary of our life. <laughs> so when we say sacrifice, of course, we are not burning our body. But we are giving <laughs> up, right? <laughs> We're giving up a lot of uh, like comfort, uh, selfish. I mean, not not selfish. I mean, it's like self kind of thing, you know. Yeah. It just dawned on me, like, oh, we're on Facebook. I don't want people to think we're talking yeah, about no, 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 no. Yeah, no and it, it's so important that we know that that's meant. It's it really did happen, but it, for us, it's a metaphor that yeah, we're sacrificing. Mean, yeah, our old self, our old attitude, our old mentality, our old uh, way of living. And we no mm -hmm. longer live for ourselves, but we live for others because yeah. of people. And that's how we show our love. And, you know, um, if you love God, you love people. Mm -hmm. and that's how you show them. I I'm think gonna... so that's the key to why, like, that's a key to why we overcome the things we battle sickness and yeah. the, the hard things we go through is that, you know, like Paul said, it would be better if I were to be with Christ, but, but you need me, you know, I need no, Yeah. He knew he so, needed to be. Able yeah. To and and it's that way for us. It would be better if we just all died when we got born again and we're in heaven <laughs> for us, but there's other people yeah. around us that need mm -hmm. Christ. So we that's why we're like, still here and that's why we overcome the things that come against us so that we can leave a, a kingdom legacy in people. Great. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, let's go on and read the, uh, the study Bible notes here. Um, can I get a reader for this one? We'll just, we're going to just read this paragraph and then we'll discuss okay. that a little bit for a few minutes. Okay. So that one's needy. That one's a good one. Jesus. Mm -hmm in his pre-existent state was in the form of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1.1, 1, 1. the Greek word morph was translated form 
Here in Philippians 2, 6, this Greek word means the nature or essence, Vine's expository dictionary. Uh, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. Okay. Continue. Yeah, I'm going to scroll up, but I wanted to, I wanted to just say in the be beginning of this right here, was Jesus in his pre-existent state was in the form of God, mm -hmm. you know, but we also read in the beginning was the word and the word was God was with God and the word was God. So if you think of all these different forms of the way God sent his love to us, to the way he sent his salvation, um, mm -hmm. it was, we, we are so blessed. We get the Bible, we get the Holy Spirit and we had Jesus and we have Jesus and, and all mm -hmm. three of them are in, even though they're all one, it's all mm -hmm. different forms. Right. So, okay, like sorry, girl, I just had to say that because that was, is that's okay. Is there no, any other input? Mm -hmm. If not, we could go on. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. However, okay. However, Jesus did not demand or cling to his rights as God. He laid aside his divine rights and privileges in order to take the form of a servant and he made and and be made in the likeness of man. He further humbled himself by becoming obedient to the Father even to the point of death. This was the supreme sacrifice that identified Jesus totally with humanity and enabled God to redeem mankind by dying a criminal's death upon the cross. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy in Deuteronomy 21:23 and bore our curse in his own body. Mm -hmm. This redeemed us from that curse and opened wide God's blessing of justification through faith in Christ and the promise of his Holy Spirit, Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Paul was saying that Jesus did not think it was unjust to be equal with God. The reason he thought that way was because in truth, he was equal with God. Jesus is God. This is a very clear reference to the deity of Jesus. It is unfortunate that the New International Version translated this verse as who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped this leaves the I'm sorry the something <laughs> yeah sorry about that the impression that Jesus wasn't divine and then NIV study bible pre presents that as one interpretation of this verse yet the first part of the verse even in the NIV says Jesus was in very nature God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the well. last part of it here. The message translated this verse as he had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. The whole point of Paul's statement is to show how much Jesus humbled himself for our sakes. The example is seriously weakened if it is presumed that Jesus wasn't God and it would violate many scriptures that present that presence presents the deity of Christ. Yeah. And then if we go down to the questions, um, number one, was Jesus totally equal with God? And yes. 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 That's what we're getting out of why he said the the new international version um kind of downplays his status because he he was equal but he downplayed his own status on purpose and yeah. that, that's what we need to remember we need to realize because of, there are so many religions and groups of people that um even in the history books they call jesus just a prophet exactly yeah the and jehovah's witnesses really believe he's just a prophet yeah a lot of them do a lot of the uh, and other religion as well yeah yeah to me that's an insult i don't know mm -hmm. 
I, I just find it so insulting that people, um, my daughter, she changed it in her history book in school. She scribbled out. I mean, she put next to prophet, Lord and savior. <laughs> she got in trouble for that, but she's like, I don't care. I'm just, gonna, you know, um, maybe oh, she'll yeah. speak to somebody else with that book. I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> but well, I, I don't know. I mean, have you all, I know you, we know that he is, Jesus is the Lord, our Lord and Savior, and we've received him. Well, you know, any other opinions on that? And what, how would you tell people that think that? That's my question. How would you tell people that Jesus was God? Because you could say it just like that, but then they'll be like, well, you know, he was just a man. and Some of that was made up and so on and so forth. And you know, I, I just go on to say in my, for my own defense, I'll say, well, how can you argue with a book that has been around since the beginning of time that has had more copies than any other book um, that has testimony after testimony after testimony of people? You know, what are your thoughts about that? What would you say to someone if they said Jesus was just a prophet? I've, I've had that question posed to me even in the last few days. And what I said to my husband is in Romans, it talks about, I think it's Romans 1, and it talks about, Jesus, we know that there's the Godhead. That we know, we all know, because that which was may, which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So I, I look at nature. It says to look at nature, how God created man. We're a three-part thing. Just, just little things like that. How were we all made? We have, even when Andrew talks about the seed, and how the seed has to die, the seed has to be planted, then it has to grow up and be a, a vine, then it grows a husk or something like that, and then it grows the full corn in the year. So those are three things that have to happen in a seed to be produced, because the fruit comes after. Mm -hmm. We're a three-part being, we're spirit, soul, and body. So mm -hmm. God's the three-part being, because we're made mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. I also was thinking about the uh, comparison to water, which is one of the things that is not on other planets. And so they do not have life. So water is a good uh, analogy or a type of, of God's personality, or I don't know what the word would be, but it comes in three forms. It comes in a solid, it comes in a liquid, and it comes mm -hmm. in vapor, right? So I that's I've heard that analogy before too. That's a good one. That is a good one. Water has amazing properties. The more you study it, the more amazing you find out that it is. And and I mean it cleanses our bodies. Our bodies are made up of over what was it, 90% water, I think. Yeah. So and all living things, all living things have water. So Mm -hmm. wow. yeah with and god god is the spirit and the spirit in scripture is analogous to water and the word is spirit and truth and it is water we wash wow. wa the washing of the word so there's a lot in that and it comes in three, huh. three yeah. it's one in essence it's still water h2o but it comes in three different forms or expressions and that's how God's nature is. That's for me, good. I think, uh, for me, uh, I, I would say the most powerful, this is my experience. The most powerful is you cannot, you see, it's my experience, my personal experience that Jesus is real. He's God. I've seen him. I know him. I, I hear him. I live with him. And my life is full of miracles. And unless you have the similar number of uh, goodness and miracles and all the encounter you have, unless you have with your God, then you know, then you can tell me about it. But you cannot say that my God is not God, you know. 
and you you can't refuse. Of course, we have we study apologetics. You see, so that's another another thing. I mean, right. apologetics. Right. I use it for those who know how to argue uh, philosophically and high sounding everything. But for ordinary <laughs> people, I just say, okay, this is my experience. This is what I encounter, and it's real. And I live seven decades of Jesus in me. <laughs> you know, wow. I mean, seven decades. I'm seventy-two. You know, why should I be talking to you? You know, I'm just bothered. I mean, if I don't have Jesus, you know, right? I, I can't be bothered with you. You know, I'm not your class. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, all the shit will come out, right? But the thing is, you no. Know, you see, I love, I love you so much. I bother. You know, yeah. I, I, and, and I give you. You know, I can give you. A thing. I mean, I give things. You see, I give. I give like give that. So you see, you can't argue that. How can right. you see you, you do you do that? That's your God in you do that. Is any right. prophet doing it yep. in you? Your prophet uh, is dead already, right? You're so not you're, you're testifying anymore. there. You know, you know I mean, okay, that's it. People. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just, you know, just uh, do what uh, just say, okay, Jesus is here. You know, Jesus yeah. is in me. He's real, he's God. If he's not God, how can he be in me? Right? Mm -hmm. How can he manifest? He's alive in us. Yeah. Wow. yeah. He's alive. Yeah. I'm talking about his life. You know, I think, I, think a, I think a lot of people, if they really know you and they see the difference and the change in you, once you accept Christ, then they go, I want you, God. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There's something different yeah. about you. That's yeah. Right. yeah. When my yeah. husband looked at me and he said, after three weeks, he goes, I can't stand to look at you. There's something crazy, different about you. Wow. I said to him, the word oh, that the Lord spoke out of my, my mouth was, what I've got, you want. And All he right. Like, he just <laughs> went back like this, and I was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> wow. That is exactly, when I said that. That is exactly what we, we can do. Yeah, ordinary. I mean, we are ordinary people. We just don't, yeah. we just live that life. And yeah. when, when our loved ones, when our neighbor, when people, you know, who know us, they see us. Yeah. Yeah. It's the testimony of our life. Yeah. They, yeah. they are really shocked. Yeah. Jesus you, know, us. you know what I thought when we first, what was that question again? When I first read that question, um, oh. last one. How do you, um, let me scroll up here. Was Jesus totally equal to God? But I'm, I'm the one that asked if, uh, you had to just say, why was Jesus? Um, how did I word that? Uh, you, you know what I thought right away is, is if someone argues with you, as I would ask them, have you ever asked God to reveal himself to you and to show you if Jesus mm -hmm. is really his son or not? And if this is his book or not, have you ever made it personal? That's because great. I I did when I was 18 years old and the God began to deal with me on, you know, I couldn't write on my, my parents coattails or, or the church denomination. I had to know God myself in my heart. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know if God, Jesus was really his son. And if he was, if God was even real, when I found out, well, I don't want to say this on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> but, but when I found out that another a, a certain mythological person was a myth, oh a, yeah, yeah, I know her. Yeah, I was so shocked and heartbroken and disillusioned, and I thought, my gosh, if that's not real, what if God and Jesus isn't real? <laughs> what if the whole thing's a lot made up by our parents or whatever? Oh, you know? and so so I wasn't sure, and and so when I was eighteen. God began to deal with me on my own personal faith. And, and that was when I said, he shined the light on me down in my soul. And he showed me I was empty and dark inside and alone. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, as part of my testimony is that um, I just prayed and I said, God, I don't know if you're real. I don't know if Jesus is your son, but I want to know, please show me. And I had the Bible yeah. open for about the 15th time on my pillow. And, and I was ready to read it. I had tried on my own and I could not understand it. I did not have spiritual understanding. It just was gobbledygook to me. 
yes. in my Negro mind. And when I prayed that prayer and, and I humbled myself and I asked God to show me the truth, that's when Jesus came into my heart. That's great. And, and, and the scales came off and I could see spiritual things. And it was so, it was such a change. And I had been raised in a religious church, you know, but I didn't, it had not become personal to me because I wasn't born again inside my own spirit. So that's, that's the difference. I'm going to start doing that now. I'm going to start asking, you know, has, have you ever asked? God himself to reveal himself to you. To, yeah, you know, because I've you heard many himself. people, my pastor back home is Malaysian, Chinese, and and he was raised Taoist Buddhist. And he, when he was in college, he got part of his testimony as he went through a time where things were so hard, he had to know the true God. And if there was a God, and he wasn't sure by then, and when he mm -hmm. and his friend had been witnessing to him and about Jesus. And so that's when he humbled himself and he asked God to show him the truth. Is, is Jesus the real God or is it somebody else? And God came into his heart and revealed it to him. So, yeah, he'll do it if we're he is good. So, you know, yeah, that's yes. he's our father. So, we, you know, he wants to share with us. That's Your right. Testimony, actually, a lot of people are uh, encounter Jesus because they ask. Yeah. yeah. I, right. I, uh, right. A lot of I'm gonna them. I'm gonna skip over question three because we don't even want to think about what happens if it's presumed Jesus wasn't God. Because we've already talked about that. Um people already do that. And you know, you see how that works out for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work out good. No, <laughs> not at all. Never. No, yeah. <clears throat> Philippians 2.7. I, oh. I think we're all beyond the point of, of believing if God isn't a Jesus or right. Jesus. I mean, yeah. Right. Oh no. I mean, they have too much experience and too much uh, testimonies for that. I couldn't even. <laughs> it's it's like after having kids, you don't remember life before having kids. Once you have children, it's like, what was that like? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like knowing Jesus what's you'll get it back believe me yeah no back. I mean but before <laughs> Jesus you know like uh what was that like I don't <laughs> I don't remember what that was like mm. um Philippians 2 7 says but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men mm. um that's okay I'm going to read the living commentary if I can scroll down a little faster. I don't want to lose a page, otherwise I'd... Jesus was almighty God, yet he laid aside his glory and became a man. He was a sinless man, but a man nonetheless. What humility that the creator would become his own creation. Notice that it says Jesus did all this to himself. He didn't just consent to the father and let the father do this. This was a choice and action his choice and actions the new international version says that jesus took on the very nature of a servant the greek word morph was translated form in the king james version and nature in the niv literally means shape figuratively nature strong's concordance this greek word was only used three times in scripture mark 16 12 philippians 2 6 and this verse. In each of these three times it was translated form. This very context prohibits the translation nature since it goes on to say in the likeness of men. Jesus took on the form or likeness of mankind. He had a sinless physical body, but it was still a physical body. In the spirit, however, he was Lord. Oh, excuse me just a second. He was Lord at his birth. He right. didn't have a sinful human nature. Mm. That's beautiful that he did that. Yeah. Can you imagine how vulnerable he was to, and God to, to give his only begotten son in that, that even at the way that things were in Israel at the time run by the Roman soldiers and in a world of sin that God was willing to, it's it's beyond our understanding. No, we can't comprehend. <laughs> like, 
but oh, it's amazing. That, that is true. He was so vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead. The decision for Jesus to become flesh was not forced upon him. He chose that path of his own volition. The phrase made himself of no reputation is simply describing how Jesus humbled himself. The American Heritage Dictionary defines reputation as one, the general estimation in which a person is held by the public. Mm -hmm. To the state or situation of being held in high esteem. Mm -hmm. Jesus came from being recognized and worshiped by all the hosts of heaven mm -hmm. as the supreme God to being a man despised and rejected. <clears throat> yeah. The creator became the creation. The Lord became the servant. The mm. highest became the lowest. All of this was done because of God's great love for us. Mm. I don't know. Powerful. Yeah, how do you? <laughs> God gave me a song about that at on Easter, sent just this last Easter, about how you came. Can I sing it? Do sure. You know? Yeah, we'd love that. I haven't sang for a while, and it's so dry up here; it's hard on my voice. But <clears throat> okay, it's called "You Came." You came to this world as a lamb, a lamb among wolves. You came to this earth to be a sacrifice for all of our sin. And now, now we get to know you, know you by your spirit, God. Cause you're living inside and now, now we can worship, worship you in spirit and in truth. We have no need to hide. You came to this world as a man. You left your glory behind and you came so that we might be justified just as if we'd never sinned. And now, now we can know you, know you by the Spirit, Lord, because you're living inside. And now, now we can enter live in your presence god and learn to abide that's the gist of it that was good. Awesome. Oh, thank thank you. You. that's really in the spirit you know? yeah Dude, that was great. beautiful thank you yeah. that was good good job lisa thanks my voice doesn't work but it's dry up here <laughs> on this mountain yeah, but that that's took some gumption. You really had that. That was for Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's that right. That's right. And he gave me that song. It was a spiritual song to remind me, you know. It was beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. We're running short on time, but if you guys don't mind going over a little bit, I'll, I'll stick it out and not to worry. I'm just letting you know we're at uh, 1025 right now. Okay. At Eastern Standard. Oh. Okay, so if anyone needs to go, or if you're getting too tired, let me know, because we got one more verse to go through. Um, but I do, I do want to go through this discussion question. What difference, if any, do you think it would make to Christianity if Jesus had been forced to come to earth instead of choosing to do it himself? I mean, <laughs> that's an obvious answer, but if you, <laughs> just the question itself kind of has well, I don't think we'd have the same attitude today. <laughs> yeah, I was no, thinking. Why not? Oh. <laughs> no, he, he did that well. Least the world would have, the, our world would have self-destruct. Self-destruct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Self yes. Yeah. It's You're gone. right about We're that. Yeah. 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 We would not be here. Yeah. You're right about that. Um, and, you know, how does this verse describe Jesus humbling self, himself? Just mm -hmm. like it says in number three, the creator became the creation. The Lord yeah. became, you know, he, he was the servant. He served, he came down um, and he was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You know, when I, when I received that song from the Lord, I was meditating on 
how he's called us to, and sends us out as lambs among wolves. And, you know, God did that. He sent his son mm -hmm. as a little tiny infant in a manger in this dangerous world because it was it had to be done. It was the only way, you and, know. And, and I look at it this way, too, even though that he sent him as a child, a baby, mm -hmm. innocent person, even Herod was so threatened by him, knowing that, that he killed all the two-year-olds and under. Mm -hmm. That's right. You think about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how lame can a man be or possessed or, or oppressed or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. um, pushed to kill children, babies. It's yeah. Well, he didn't even do it himself. He had the soldiers do it. Let's I know, that. but just even to have the nerve to do that. That yeah. was, an, that was a very, very severe form of narcissism. That's what okay. that was because he, yes. he wanted to be the one that they feared and followed and obeyed. And he wasn't willing even for God to come first right mm -hmm. and if he, that's another right. testimony as far as jesus being who he was because if mm -hmm. that's recorded in history books and so mm -hmm. if one king could be so afraid of the birth of jesus and it was right. at the same time he was born and i don't even fall. think that herod from what i've been reading is that i don't even think herod lasted more than like another three or four years after he was born no, so he got sick right after. I think he that. died right he after. Died. And and the fact that he thought he could live long enough to even be well, over him was like incredible. Like, how could you think that way? Was he the one that fell into a pit and worms came out of him? <laughs> I'm not sure if <laughs> it was him him or not, he was him or not. He fell down, he fell down from his no, he, he was sitting at a at a seat. Uh right. people were saying that comparing him with God, you know. Okay. So oh, he, that was the Herod? That that was right. and then the worms, yeah, he was eaten by worms and then he died. That was yeah. it. Yeah. I knew that. Uh, the yeah. It's in the book of Acts, very beginning of the book of Acts. So it's, it's like he didn't last long. No. Yeah. no. Yeah. Because I I, was, actually, yeah. wouldn't it? No, I don't think that's the same Herod. I think that's the son. Because Herod was alive when jesus was a newborn baby and then herod his only his other son possible took, yeah possible. and it, it was agrippa i think his name was but no I'm no it's not agrippa no no agrippa no. is another, another person mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I don't remember i'm getting the facts mixed up no, they, they use the name herod as yeah uh, as the king to, yeah as a king yeah that's right maybe a king. King. yeah yeah so it's it's not a, a really a real name no, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's a name. It's a name, but the thing is that yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we had it get off it. Yeah. it was more like a title, I would say. But ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and read. Um, yeah, we're gonna eight. Be, yes, yes. What we'll 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 right before we're done? I'm gonna break that down as a question for uh, next time when we're on here because um, I'm you know, make mm -hmm. sure we. We answer that one. So I don't want to leave any stone unturned. <laughs> you know, I, I I don't know if you're all like that, but I I can't stand it when I don't answer a question or if, it, if I have a question out there. Wait, I got it. I got to know the answer. <laughs> What's the question <laughs> about who Herod? Which Herod it was? But, well, yeah. I, it was definitely not the Herod that killed all the two-year-old baby babies because yeah, he well, within was a couple of years. And uh, Philippians 2 8, we're gonna I'm gonna read that. In, uh, it says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's that's the one. That's right. The one. Which was the worst form of death for the lowliest of criminals, right? Yeah. Even the Roman soldiers didn't like to do it. But, but they did it. They get drunk to do it. It was putrid. It was like yeah, something that it was horrible. Uh, um, who found Jesus in the form of man? I believe this is speaking of Jesus finding himself in the form of a man. Jesus mm -hmm. existed as God before he came to this earth as a man. 
But when he took on human form, he took on the human form of a child. He didn't come out of the womb speaking Hebrew. He <laughs> had to learn how to walk, talk, eat, and think. As the scripture says in Luke 2.52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Mm-hmm. Jesus had to learn who he was. Mm-hmm. Jesus' spirit was perfect and completely God, even as a child. The angels proclaimed him Lord at his birth, Luke 2.11, but his physical mind was limited. It was sinless, but limited nonetheless. It had to be taught. And oops, pardon me. It had to be taught. Where am I here? Sorry about that. And there were times when he had to go beyond the limits of even his sinless mind and operate in the power of his eternal spirit. John eleven thirty three and also Romans eight twenty six. The Holy Spirit within Jesus certainly prompted him to and enlightened him as to his true identity but he had to educate his mind to that truth and accept it by faith. Hmm. Sorry about that, guys. I, this is all in words, so it's a little separated. This is why Satan began each of his temptations to Christ with the word, if thou be the son of God, Matthew 4, 1, 11, and Luke 4, 1 through 13. Mm-hmm. He was trying to get Jesus to, into insecurity about who he was and to get him to do something to prove it. Likewise, we have to go against our own limited physical senses and accept by faith our new identities in Christ. And that's, I think, one of the things that um, many people struggle with. We get that a lot from Satan. He's always trying to, that's, that's the number one thing with people. And you might not even know it, but mm-hmm. he's constantly telling you can't do that. You cannot do that. You can't mm-hmm. do that. No, mm-hmm. and he's a no man. So mm-hmm. I don't know if you all struggle with that same thing, but um, mm-hmm. does anybody want to read this section over here? I'll, I'll just have you read the whole entire thing. Which is, it, it is very significant that yeah. Jesus was found in fashion. Uh-oh. Okay. Okay. As a man, Jesus was the preexistent God who chose to become a man so that he could redeem us by his own blood sacrifice. When he became a man, he was still 100% God in his spirit, but his physical body was 100% human. His body was sinless, but it was still flesh and subject to the natural things everyone experiences. The physical Jesus had grown in wisdom and in stature, Luke 2.52, when Jesus was born, His physical mind did not know all things. He had to be taught how to talk, walk, eat, and so forth. He had to learn that he was God in the flesh and accept that by faith. That's why the word found is used in this verse. He found himself in the form of a man. His physical mind grew in awareness of who he was. He had the witness in his spirit but his physical mind had to take it by faith the same way that we do when we believe who we are in the spiritual realm. When Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he began by saying, if thou, if thou be the son of God, Satan was not just expressing his own doubts. He was trying to get Jesus to doubt who he was. Jesus's mental comprehension of his deity was something he learned and took by faith. Jesus had to become aware of his true identity through revelation knowledge. Remember that Paul was using Jesus as an example of how we should let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves right yep yep. you got it okay look not every man on his own things but every man also on the things of others jesus is the supreme example of selflessness and putting others ahead of himself Do, do you want me to keep going if you please yes we see clearly from jesus's example that the way to exaltation in god's kingdom comes through humility 
and servanthood to others. Paul's example of Christ's humiliation is not only a lesson in Christology, but also an example to all believers of what greatness in God's kingdom entails. Let this attitude of heart, Paul declared, taken from the example of Jesus Christ, continue to motivate all true believers in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Yep. Now, <clears throat> we know when they're asking the question number one here, how was Jesus born? We just discussed that because mm -hmm. we were just saying, you know, he came in as a little child and he did as a baby. He didn't have mm -hmm. to. Um, no, question two, what benefits or hindrances do you think Jesus encountered as he grew in wisdom and in stature? I couldn't even imagine. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure there were so many because he was sinless, mm -hmm. um, but still human. Yeah, I think part of it was his his own relatives didn't really know who he was. You know, they didn't recognize him. He knew who he was, but his own brothers you know, came and had doubts and tried to sew it into him at times. I never thought of that. That's there. part of it. Because his mother part. and father knew who he was, but they... Right, but not the siblings. Yeah. Kids were taught. His spirit, his spirit is uh, perfect and uh, completely God. And he knows it, even as a child. Uh, mm -hmm. On the other hand, because the you, you see, the, he has got a body, you see. So mm -hmm. probably he was limited. I mean, he actually said that when the Spirit, Holy Spirit come and he went away, it would be better for us because the Spirit itself is not limited. So he was constrained in the body. Uh, he could have, I would imagine, you know, that he could have done a lot more. That's why he said the disciple can do a lot more because we have the Holy Spirit now. So that I would think is the one of the, one of the uh, limitation, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, apart from the fact that he has no sin, you know, so That's it, yeah. uh, it, it's like he's surrounded by, you know, by a world full of sin. That's very tough but to think of it that way. You know? mm -hmm. So that's part of the, part of the constraint. Right. I'm, I'm kind of wondering while you were talking, all of a sudden I had this thought, of the transfiguration of Christ when he was talking with Moses and Elijah. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering, was that his first real, true, 100%, I'm definitely God in the flesh encounter that he knew for sure, for sure, for sure. And what, what his whole purpose was about right at that moment. Or did he have those encounters all through his life? Kind yeah, of a, it's a good question. Good thought, see, because I, know a, baptism. I, I have a clue here. Uh, because <laughs> when, when Jesus was, uh, uh, when, when Peter was, you know, he cut off the ear of the, the servant yes. of the high priest at the Garden of Gethsemane when he was arrested. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Jesus said something. He said, I could have asked my father to send, you know, thousands and thousands <laughs> of people yes. from heaven. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He probably, I mean, he would have, he was like walking in two realm, you know, living in two yeah. realms. Right. I, I, yeah, because when I was a kid, I was like five years old or four years old, something mm -hmm. happened to me and my cousin had come over and he had found something and I said, no, it wasn't him that found it. It was me. I lied, totally lied about it. <laughs> and everybody believed me, but the Holy Spirit I don't know if it was the conscience or whatever it was. I was so convicted by saying that. And it was the first encounter I ever remember having with God, I believe. And I remember saying, oh, I can't do that anymore. That was not good. <laughs> and I was so young. And so mm -hmm. I'm wondering, when you think about it, if he had that transfiguration happen to him, in front of uh, Peter and John, and was it James was there or just the two of them? Anyways, if he had that encounter, I wonder how many encounters he had like that. Yeah. Before you could, right. could you imagine? I never, never thought of it until just this moment. That that's something. Yeah. What was that? 
Can you imagine him as a teenage boy? But yeah. They don't, yeah. we're not, we're not taught um, that in the Bible much if, about that. If right. he, and we, my father's house, you know, he, he's like at 12, he was in the temple and, yeah. and the parents that's, were looking for him. And he said, don't good. you know that I should be in my father's house? So he knew, he knew that yeah. that was the real he father. He would have known. God, yeah, he would have known. Because I think uh, but if okay i got another question for you and it's kind of a bizarre one the conscience was only given to man after adam sinned now if he uh if mary was conceived by if jesus was conceived by god the father through the holy spirit did he even have a conscience you know, I think we're a wild, kept, bizarre question. <laughs> I think I think there's a mistake. Can we answer that, that next week? <laughs> yeah, I think we're making a mistake in thinking that he was just like us, and there is a difference. And the difference is that his spirit was never cut off from God. Yeah. We're yeah. born sin because of Adam's sin. He did not exactly. inherit Adam's in nature. Mm -hmm. So exactly. he really did have a direct connect to mm -hmm. God, but it was constrained yeah. by point. Yeah. yeah. His spirit yeah. was always, is always joined to the Father's spirit. Right. The right. Spirit. He, he wouldn't have to then. He hmm. said it was just limited in his mind, but it, you know, that's just, it didn't say he didn't know. It just said it was limited. Yeah. By his humanity. It's just like, I think it's like if you put something inside of a package that ex has the ability to expand. I don't know. I've, I've just mm. got this picture in my mind that it's amazing that God was poured into a human body, you know, mm. and, yeah. and somehow because he's so powerful and he was limited by his own free will. To, to to walk out the walk that we have to walk, the walk of the spirit, right? To be yeah. led by the Holy Spirit. So I see what you're saying, yeah. That he's a trailblazer for us. He was the That's first it. born. And he blazed the trail for us, for us to walk on. And he showed us how to live, how to think, how to talk, mm -hmm. how to be around others, how to respond to wrongdoing. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. look at how they treated him. He taught us the right yeah. way and he lived it and he never once stepped out of step with the father. And so that's how, that's our yeah, hope. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think Paul, Paul actually bring out this point. Uh, although Jesus could have, you know, live the life of a God, even on earth, um, but he, he didn't, he didn't do it, you know, in loneliness of mind, he just, he just, you know, he just humbled himself to be just like a human without sin. And, uh, and he said, let, uh, he actually used Jesus as an example in chapter two, you know, for the, for the Christian. So we have to look at that and we just have to realize that, you know, that's our role model. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. This was wonderful. I really appreciate y'all coming on and this input. I, I say this every time and I mean it so much that our own input as to what we read and, and how much we get insight in our own revelations and testimony, that means the world to everyone. And um, I also want to give everyone on Facebook the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So if there's anyone interested in still watching, um, please repeat these words and you, you know, all you have to do is believe in your heart. And so it, it we'll go like this, Father God in heaven, in Jesus name, I would just want to, in Jesus name, I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and savior, that Jesus Christ is Lord and savior. And then you you resurrected him from the dead. And, and then you resurrected him, him from, from the dead. For our salvation. For our salvation. For our righteousness. For our righteousness. For our divine healing. For our divine, for our divine healing. healing. And, and our health. And Lord, thank you for saving me. 
And Lord, thank you, thank you for me. saving me. So if that's the Amen. first time anybody's ever said that, welcome aboard. We're going to have a Holy Ghost party. Amen. Thank, you thank you, everybody, for Amen. coming. Um, we're going to say goodnight to Facebook. Good night, Facebook. Good night. Good night, Facebook.